we're not collecting everybody's email. We're not collecting everybody's phone things. We're not listening to that. Our job is foreign intelligence, and we're very good at that. That General Keith Alexander, head of the NSA, defending his program and his agency on 60 Minutes last night and their use of the so-called metadata, gathering details about who called whom and when, but not collecting, they say, info on what they were saying. The NSA, of course, under the microscope increasingly in recent months since revelations by Edward Snowden about just how much information the government gathers, who they gather info on, and how it's used, and so much more. And today, a federal judge ruled that the NSA had gone too far and probably violated the Constitution, though he also made sure his ruling would not stop any work at the NSA pending appeal. Judge Richard Leon, an appointee, by the way, of President George W. Bush, wrote, quote, mass data collection involving innocent Americans appears to violate the Constitution's ban on unreasonable searches. And noting that today's computerized gathering of all dialing records metadata represents a new threat to privacy that was not fully recognized in the past, saying the almost Orwellian technology that enables the government to store and analyze the phone metadata of every telephone user in the U.S. is unlike anything that could have been conceived in 1979 when the Supreme Court last ruled that the use of a telephone call data case. But the question is, does this really change the way that the NSA works? Does it put us possibly at risk? Again, the top man at the NSA says, be careful what you ask for. What you see going on in Syria, what we see going on Egypt, Libya, Iraq, it's much more unstable. The probability that a terrorist attack will occur is going up. And this is precisely the time that we should not step back from the tools that we've given our analysts to detect these types of attacks. Privacy protection. Um, Gene, it's just... The technology is so outpaced, the law and everything else. It's not even just, we'll start with the government, but you now have, I think it was eight leading technological firms who said, you know, from now on, you got to be more clear what you want from us instead of asking us to turn everything over. It's almost hard to figure out where to start and where to stop on this thing. But after watching last night, I'm even more confused than when I started here. You get the idea the NSA is not just in this for, uh, you know, uh, for kicks. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. Time Magazine was debating between having the Pope as the man of the year or Edward Snowden, and I know that Tom wanted Edward Snowden, <laughs> so I'm sorry that that didn't work out for you, Tom. The bullseye in his head. <laughs> but it, it's true, and you know, and the judge described it as Orwellian, and I think to many of us it is, and I think the point here is the law has not caught up with the technology, and but that's been an issue though? for several but decades. Can, it? can you, well, at can some you point detect it has to. and, and um, acquire real-time data um, and with the metadata and how they do it and how they're being able to connect the dots and go through all of the processes, can you still have your privacy and your protection at the same time? Well, I mean, we've always had a balance in this country, right, between liberty and security. And so that's a balance that has to be struck, but it has to be struck by the law. And the question here is due process being followed. And in this case, you know, the judge is saying at this point he doesn't believe that it's being followed. If it is, then security takes precedence. But in this case, it's a violation of liberties, or he fears it's a violation of liberties. So I think that's what we're waiting for, is the law to make that determination. It, so far, they haven't been able to make that case. Andrew, if I told you we could know empirically this is just on um, information, phone, internet chatter, that at least originates in part abroad, um, that it isn't taking our conversations internally here, would your opinion change about where the line starts and stops? No. No, the line's very clear, and we've had that line written into our Constitution since we started. It's We have... A, a right to uh, unreasonable uh, against unreasonable search and the seizure. The line is not very the, clear, it, though. It actually is because it's the, not the government clear. needs to have a warrant it, it, to get it, it, information. It moves. The line moves. It, it does. And, and just because we post this stuff doesn't mean that the government has a right to monitor, at least in my mind, every time we, we use the phone or every time but we use the But if the line was email. clear, this would be a clear-cut case. And I'm sorry, the line has never been clear on unreasonable search and seizure. It's something that's determined historically. It's just something that's determined depending on who's in the court. It's something that's, and with quite frankly, and with on, in terms well. of what we're well, insecure well, Tom, about. I'm, I'm I know, with Rand Paul yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think it's gone too far. And I, he I, loves to say I'm that. I'm sure Tom's <laughs> going to agree with this, but... God forbid there were another 9-11 and it changes the whole dialogue yet again, doesn't it? 
It does, and, and obviously someone, the Seattle Seahawks, were obviously listening to the giant phone call this past <laughs> week. I mean, look. I don't I, think they needed to. There were drones flying yeah. over the stadium. <laughs> look, I, I think it's really funny is that I don't care. I just don't care. I mean, if the, the government's listening to my phone conversations, I don't care. If the government's releasing my phone conversations, I have a problem with it. My kids, younger people, have a real issue with this. They, they, they're down on the Snowden side of things, that this is how it starts. You know, we're going to get to a point where big government, big government, big government. Look, national security after 9-11. That's the priority, and that needs to remain you trust our priority. The on this? You don't you, trust you, the government you, on anything, you know Tom, what? and yet on I, this, on your personal phone calls, on your because, what you're doing because I'm not breaking any laws. Whatever I talk about, what, what I care about is the safety and security of my country, the people at this table, my kids, et cetera, et cetera. If that means they're listening to my phone call to talking to a genie in the afternoon about are, what we're going to say on this show, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, no, no <laughs> it, it doesn't matter to Please, me. Tom. So, so I think that that is the, 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 the scramble we have amongst ourselves is that we could take the simplistic view of, oh, look, years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, I was front page in the New York Post. Somebody illegally listened to my phone conversations, and. A, court, a Supreme Court ruling afterwards, I could have sued the New York Post for millions of dollars because they obtained something that was illegally gotten. We, we evolve, we change. The law changed eight years ago. The Supreme Court said you cannot print material mm -hmm. that you got illegally, et cetera. We have those in my camp who say, listen, national security is a priority. Others who may take Andrew's approach of, listen, I don't want anybody to listen to my phone calls. It's none of their business. I understand both, I understand both sides of it. But at the end, we really have to protect ourselves as a country. But it's also the case of the process by which this occurs. It can't be one individual or one single entity making these decisions. And that's where I think Obama is headed, is that you need people, a broad swath of right. people, to make the determination that listening to Tom's phone conversations is okay. Agreed. And so that's something that needs, it can't just be, you know, Richard or Dominic making that decision. It's got to be. It's got to be you know, transparent. Yeah. And all Americans and understand the process. the process. And I think that's yeah. why we were a little caught off with somebody's actually listening. You know, I mean, I thought, yeah. well, yeah, hell they are. But I think Americans were thrown off by that. It's so we need, supposed to be difficult. you need transparency. It's supposed, it's supposed to be difficult. We might not want it to be. Yeah, but it's supposed, with, when the government has the power to throw you in jail or take away your liberties or your freedoms, it's supposed to be difficult for them to do that. You know what's funny? In 2002, no one would even have had this conversation because right. we said, do whatever you got to do. Right. Now, thankfully, we're at a place we can have this long overdue conversation. But God forbid something next year happens, we'll go right back to where but we're that's how Ameri do that, but that, you that's how, But that's yeah. how Americans always act. I wish yeah. we had this is, 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 is that why? No, but, but if you had it, you know, six months after 9-11, we'd be like, listen, who are we going to get, you know? We change consistently in this country. Um, when we come back, uh, Mayor Bloomberg um, certainly uh, is not going quietly into the good night. He's got a lot of big ideas in terms of how he'd like to see New York City look. And he's uh, leaving a few things on the doorstep of the incoming mayor on that. And not only where he goes from here, but also what will he do, Mayor Bloomberg, going forward, his role? We'll talk about that.